My name is Elise Tepner. This is my son, Cole. And uh, we have been at Rolling Hills, I think, for like 10 years. I don't know if it's necessarily about him or just the fact that he's a teenager. And I'm trying to be the best mom while also trying not to be annoyed. <laughs> Probably like when she has like certain chores to do. I, I know that I'm gonna get them done, but she wants them done at like a certain time. So I'll either just go and do them or I'll just like leave before she notices that they're not done. I would say an opportunity for me to develop patience with Cole would be to be really in tune with what he needs at the moment and aware of um, situations and how I can, as a parent, honor his requests while pointing his decisions to the Lord's favor. I feel like a way that I could show patience is responding respectfully. Christ shows patience with me by meeting me exactly where I am. And he just humbles me when I might be very focused on one outcome and he can sideswipe me and say, no, it's not gonna be that way, it's gonna be this way. And reminds me that, wow, the things I ask for may not happen now, but they happen in his time, even if the answer looks different. Wow, well good morning, good morning Rolling Hills Church family. It's so good to be together today. I'm so glad that you're here. I love these testimonies before because it's so real, man. It's real life. It's the things we're all dealing with, the things we're walking through, and yet we have a God who is sovereign, a God who is greater, and we've come to worship Him today. Also today we're live streaming, so a big welcome to our Nolensville campus, and great job on the Little League World Series. That was awesome, so fun, and Nolensville, so many great things happening. Our Nashville campus, God's moving college students back and our Columbia campus and baptisms and life change and online, wherever you're joining from. And here at our Franklin campus, man, God is at work. And thank you for your patience with the parking lot that's coming and it's going to be here. But thank you guys. You're amazing. And I love serving God together. You know, we're one church with multiple locations, multiple campuses so that we can make an impact here in Middle Tennessee for the glory of our great God. And we're on that journey together. And I am so grateful and so thankful. Also, welcome back to our series, man. We're in this incredible series called Fresh Fruit, and we're walking through the fruit of the Spirit. You see, when you become a follower of Jesus, right, God places His Holy Spirit in you. And, and so you're not alone. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you, to comfort you, to guide you. And the evidence that you are a Christ follower is the fruit of the Spirit, right? You can look at a fruit tree and you can know what kind of tree it is by the fruit, right? You go, that's an apple tree because there's apples, all right? There's an orange tree because there's oranges. But you look at a Christ follower, how do you know they're a Christ follower? It's not just they go, well, I go to church every now and then. No, it's the fruit that's in your life. It's what God is doing in you and through you. And so we look at the fruit of the Spirit, and it tells us this in Galatians chapter 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. And so as you and I look at our lives, are we growing in these areas, right? Are we seeing the fruit come out of our lives because of what God's doing in us? And so the first week we talked about love, right? Love. Jesus said the most important commandment, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And the second is like it, love your neighbors yourself. So I ask you, are you growing in your love? I mean, are you more loving today than you were a year ago or five years ago or 10 years ago? Are you maturing in that area of your love? What about joy, right? We talked about joy. And God wants us to enjoy life, to be joyful always, even when things are chaotic around us. And there's a difference between joy and happiness, happiness based on circumstances, joy is based on Christ. And what God's doing in us and through us, that we can have joy. And then last week, peace. Oh man, so good. In this world of chaos, in this world of uncertainty that that Jesus gives us the peace that passes understanding. And people go, how can you be at peace in the middle of all this? And you're like, hey, yeah, uh, God's got this. Uh, I'm trusting in God. And then today, we're talking about this one, patience, right? Wow, this is a big one for all of us, isn't it? Uh, last week, I was out in the gallery, and a, a guy came up to me, and he said, my wife told me I better be there next week, right? <laughs> I better be there for that one, patience. And I'm like, me too, yeah, you know, because... 
I think this is the one we all deal with in some ways. And as I look at this list, I'm like, okay, God, I need to grow in these areas, and especially in this patience. And why is that? Because we live in this society that's so fast-paced, right? We live in this society that's always about more, more stuff, more things, more, 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 more. And so we get caught up in that. We live in this instant society, you know? I saw a study the other day that said if it takes longer for something to download than three seconds, 50% of people drop off. Three seconds! I'm like, whoa, you know, right? And at nine seconds, the other 25% drop off. So now you're left with 25% of people. And so, man, we go from 3G to 4G to 5G. Now in Chattanooga, there's some company that's rolling out 25G. I'm really, it's $1,500 a month, by the way, but if you want that. But, but I'm just like, it's got to be faster and faster and faster. We have microwave society. We've got Amazon in two days. That takes forever. Are you kidding me? We need one day. No, we need two hours. We need delivery in two hours, you know, because it's got to be here quicker and faster. We got Instagram, right? And on Instagram, I mean, it's got to be right then. And, and now people are taking and they're filtering their pictures. And it's just taking way too long. So now we got be real, you know, right now. I want be real. Do it right now. Show where you are. It's that kind of society that we live in. And we get caught up in that. We get caught up in that. We think, man, I've got to do more. I've got to have more. And so we're like the little rat on the wheel, right? We're just, ee, right? We're going faster, faster, little hamster, go faster, go faster, right? Because we think, man, I'm going to miss out on something. I'm going to, I'm going to miss out on something that's happening around me. I'm not going to make enough money. I don't know if it's going to happen. And I've got to keep up. And in the middle of this world, God comes and says, hold on. Patience. Here's what the Bible says right here in Proverbs. Whoever is patient has great understanding, but the one who is quick-tempered displays folly. How many times have we been quick-tempered and displayed folly? How many times have we said things and we're like, oh, I wish I could take that back? Yikes, you know? And so I pray for us that we would get great understanding. I pray that God's word would come alive in us and we would develop this. Hold on, God's got this. Hold on, God is at work here. Hold on, let me trust him. Let me be patient in my life that seems out of control and seems crazy. You know, sometimes I pray for patience, and all of a sudden you're like, oh man, now I'm in these situations that's causing me to have to demonstrate do I have patience. So am I growing in patience? And that's what we want to talk about today. So if you've got a worship guide with you, I'd love for you to pull that out. If you want to take some notes, if you're online, you can go to the Rolling Hills app, and there's a place to fill in some blanks there just to help us grow in great understanding and grow in patience today. Here's what the world does. The world does not promote patience. Uh Uh-uh. The world promotes now. Now. You've got to be into it now. What's the latest thing? What's the latest thing that's going on? What is the now today? And here's the thing about now. Now means my timing. My timing, right? How often we get caught up in that? It's interesting, you know, living in the United States that, that we measure time in, you know, seconds and minutes and hours and months and years. In Africa and a lot of the cultures, they measure time by relationships. Way different. We measure time, right? More things, more stuff, more, more, more. And, and, and yet there's this call for time to matter, for time, for relationships, for time, for the things that are really going to last, the things that are really valuable in our lives. But so often we want it in my timing. But God, I prayed about it. Why isn't it here right now, right? <laughs> God, where are you? Did you forget about me? In my timing. And we have to stop and pull back sometimes and go, wait a minute. It's not about my timing, is it? Hold on. Let me look at this one, right? How it makes me feel. How it makes me feel. If you're a parent here, one of the times that really tests your patience is probably this, bedtime. Anybody else? Come on now, right? You know, it's bedtime, isn't it? Right? You're telling, okay, it's time to go to bed. You go to bed, and then, can I have some water? What do you mean you can have the water? You always just settle down, right? Can I have a hug? What are you? And you're going back in, right? You're going back in, and you're like, okay, it's time to settle down. It's time to settle down, right? And why? But what is that? Well, one, they're wanting attention. <laughs> and many times we're wanting to get on to the next thing. We're like, yeah, but I got a Netflix show to watch. You know, <laughs> hold on. I got Sports Center, right? I got the game, you know. And so we're trying to go, hey, man, I, I got you go here because I've got my deal and, and you're kind of getting in my way and I've got this thing that's happening and we got to go, hold on, time out. 
What's really important? It's really important. Sometimes in traffic, anybody in traffic, push your buttons on, oh man, man, me, I have to like pray for patience in the middle of traffic. I'm like, hey buddy, there's a gap right there. You know, you can f- pull up, right? Yeah. You can save us like a half a second. I mean, like, you know, come on, fill it in. You know, it's like, what are you, the grand marshal of the parade? Let's go. You know? and, and you're like, well, what is that? But we do, we want to be, you're making me late. You're blocking my way. And, and, and sometimes we got to go, wait, time out, time out, time out. It's all of a sudden about me. It's about me. You ever been there stuck in traffic and then you get up there and there's a wreck and you're like, oh, God, I pray for those people. God, uh, it just changes your perspective, right? And what they're going through right now, I pray for them. I pray for their family. And I'm so sorry that I was sitting back here frustrated. I was going to be five minutes late or ten minutes late. It, it's okay. What they're going through right now. It, you see, what we got to come back to is understand that overall, we think it's all about me, <laughs> And when we're impatient with people, we're really coming back to focus on ourselves. We're really thinking like, I'm in control. I'm the one that's more important. In fact, I'm more important than you. You know, I'm more important than my kids or my spouse or my friends or my roommates or people in traffic or the people in life. I am putting myself over everybody else. And somehow I'm trying to control everything. You know, when we talked about love, remember this, we talked about love and we said the opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is apathy. When you get to a point in relationships or you get to a point where you just don't care, that, that's a danger, right? We, the opposite of joy, it's not sadness, the opposite of joy is discontentment. When you're discontent, it steals your joy. In the Westminster Catechism, right, the chief aim of man is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever, right? And to be content, all the things that God's given you, all the blessings that you have. We look at peace, the opposite of peace many times is that chaos, that turbulence inside of us, the things that are going on around us, identifying with those circumstances. I think the opposite of patience is entitlement. It's entitlement. I'm more important, me. And we forget about God and we forget about others. And into that world, into that world, God says this, patience, patience. Take a deep breath. I'm with you. I'm for you. I love you, God says. Hey, if you have a Bible with you today, I invite you up with me to the book of James. James. James chapter 5. Man, I love God's word. And James chapter 5, so practical, so real, so rich. So if you're online, you can go to the Rolling Hills app. You can pull up the scriptures there. But James, kind of toward the back of the Bible, we got Hebrews, James, 1st, 2nd Peter, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, Jude, Revelation. So that kind of area toward the back there. James, right, was one of the leaders in the early church. So he's writing this with a lot of experience. He's, he's writing this been with a lot of people. And he says this in James chapter 5, verse 7. Be patient then, brothers and sisters. It's not just guys, right? All of us deal with this impatience in our life. Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. So he goes to this example of farming. He's like the farmer, right? He puts the seed in the ground. It doesn't matter. He's like, hurry up, grow, 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 right? That doesn't help it, right? It's like, oh, he's waiting patiently. There's going to be a harvest. Something's coming, but I'm waiting. You too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters. Ever grumble? Oh, what are they doing? Why are they making me late, right? <laughs> Hurry up. Ah, you know, would you ever grumble? He says, don't grumble. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge, capital J, right, is standing at the door. God's standing there. God's watching. God cares about how we interact with people. God cares about our relationships. God cares about our character. God wants us to trust him. So here's the thing I want you to get. Patient means Patience means waiting for God's best. Waiting for God's best in our lives. You know, we're on that hamster wheel, right? We're running, we're running, we're running. But, but are we waiting for God's best? Do we realize that God's got something bigger for us? That God's doing something greater in our lives? Here's what it says in Proverbs. A man's wisdom gives him patience. You know, knowledge is great. It's important to grow in knowledge. But man, when you grow in wisdom... That's applying that knowledge. And you and I have wisdom, start to have patience. God's bigger, God's sovereign, God's at work here. 
I'm going to wait on God's best. But here's the thing. We want patience, and we want it now. Right? We want it now. We're like, well, God, I, I prayed about it, and you didn't answer. He's like, you prayed about it this morning. Yeah, I know, but, but I prayed about it, right? I did, right? And where is it, God? Where is it? You know, it's like, hold on. Hold on. I'm working. I'm moving. Lives are being impacted. But, but we just see in this microcosm, and we get so anxious and so anxious. Uh, you know, I've got a nephew, and my nephew, we, we've been praying for his, him to come to know Christ since he was like five years old. You know, we're just praying and praying and praying. And it took a while. Now he's 23, and last year he gave his life to Christ. And we were so excited. It was like, man, 18 years of praying and going, God, are you working in his life? And God was going, look, I'm doing something bigger than you can see. I'm using people and circumstances in life. I'm bringing him to myself. But me and you just be faithful and you pray. Here's the thing it says in Psalm 5.3. You can read it later if you want to. But it says, in the morning, I lay my request before you. And I wait expectantly. (laughs) I love that. In the morning, I lay my request before you. And I don't know if you have a prayer journal. I have a prayer journal, and I have these prayers I just keep writing down. And I'm just waiting. Okay, God, in your timing. God, in your timing. But I'm going to trust, and I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep believing your best, God. Waiting for God's best. Look, learning to wait on God is sometimes the most challenging part of our spiritual journey. Learning to wait on God, right? But God, I'm single. <laughs> I want to be married. And maybe, God, you're not going to come through, so maybe I'll take and go out with this guy. I know he's not the best, but, you know, whatever. You know? <laughs> but, God, here, God, I want kids. Or, God, I want this job. Or, God, I want to be at this place in my life. God, I had these dreams. You know, I want to be a millionaire by the time I'm 40. And, God, where are you, God? Why isn't this happening? And God's going, hold on. Trust me. And that's so challenging for us type A people in the middle of our culture, the middle of our society to go, hold on, God, you're in control and I'm not. God, I want to trust in your grace. God, I want to be a man or woman after your heart. God, I'm yours. I'm yours. Are you growing in this area? There's a guy in the Old Testament named Abram. And Abram was living in this place. There were the Chaldeans and God says, Abram, leave your country, your people, and go to a land I will show you. And I'll make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. And Abram's like, I'm on that journey, God. I'm trusting you. I'm on this relationship with you. I'm following you, right? It's not about religion. It's about relationship. And he does. And he's there in this land, and God's blessed him, and things are great, but he doesn't have any kids. He's like, you promised that my descendants be as numerous as the stars in the sky. That was your promise to me. That was in that Context for me, and, and I don't have any kids. And so finally his wife, Sarah, goes, well, hey, Abram. Got to change his name to Abraham. And says, well, why don't we just uh, kind of short circuit it? Maybe God's forgotten about us. And so why don't you sleep with my maidservant, Hagar? <laughs> and he does. That's his son, Ishmael. It wasn't God's plan when God's promise. And in the middle of that folly, man, we still have tensions today from that, right? Islam traces roots all the way back through Ishmael to Abraham. Jews and Christians back through Isaac. And so you still see the impact of that. But God redeemed and God restored. And Abram says, we're going to wait on the Lord. Wait, we're going to wait. I should have done that. I should have done that. But God, I repent. I come back to you. I repent. I'm going to hold out. I'm going to trust. And he did. And he waited. He waited. And Abraham was 100 years old. Sarah, 90 years old. When God gave them a child, fulfilled that promise. And Isaac, and today, the descendants of Abraham are outnumbered the stars in the sky. But so many times, we're not willing to wait. We're going to go do it ourselves. We're going to go make it happen ourselves. And God's going, hold on. I've got you. I've got you. You're mine, and I love you with an everlasting love. I haven't forgotten about you. Trust me. Trust me. Look look at this. This is important. Patience means active waiting. It means active waiting. Right? It says in Hebrews, look at it. It says, we do not want you to become lazy, But to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what is promised. We we don't want you to become lazy. You don't just go, okay, well, you know what? That's fine. I'll just kind of kick back here. No, hold on. Trust God. Patience doesn't mean you sit around. You know, you look at the farmer, right? James gives that illustration. Farming is hard work, okay? (laughs) My dad grew up on a farm. Mississippi, and he said, man, I couldn't wait till I was 18. I was like, I'm going to college, because this is tough. I mean, this is hard. I mean, you know, you're, you're, it's hard work. 
It's hard work out there on the farm. But man, what do they do? They pull the weeds, they water, they take care of it. Why? Because there's going to be a harvest. There's going to be a harvest. They're not just sitting around. You're active. You growing spiritually, it's active. And it's not just, hey, I prayed one time and then forgot about it, right? You know, I tithed once and you know, nothing really happens, so forget it. You know, I went to one group and I, it didn't really connect. And so, you know what? I'm going to just do it on my own. No. Hold on. Spending time with the Lord, God building character. Trusting God. Serving. Being around godly people. Growing deeper in the faith. Those are the things that God's building your character. Why? Because at some point, there's going to be a breakthrough. At some point, something's going to happen. And do you have the character? Do you have the faith? Are you strong enough to be ready in that moment? God's growing you now. God's at work now. And you're waiting on the big thing in your life, but are you growing in the character in your life? Is that seed being nurtured in you? See, we must learn to be active in our waiting. And I think many of us, man, we're always trying to get to the next big thing, the next big thing, the next big thing, instead of going, hold on, I'm going to do the daily thing. I'm going to do the being in the Word. I'm being at church. I'm being committed. I'm growing. I'm listening. And I'm studying. And I'm becoming. You know, I think about this guy in the Old Testament, Noah. Can you imagine Noah? This guy, Noah, man, I mean, he, he was blameless. He was godly. And then God comes to him and says, hey, Noah, I got a big thing, right? I want you to build a boat. And I was like, what's a boat, right? <laughs> They're out of boat, you know? And he's like, well, it's going to rain. What's rain? It hadn't rained up until that point, right? He's like, it's going to rain, and you're godly, and you are trusting me, so build a boat. And Noah, I can think of, was going, well, when it rains, then I'll build the boat. How about that, God? And God goes, no, how about build the boat now, and then it'll rain? How about be ready now? You know, because one day, maybe you'll be a parent. <laughs> one day, you'll be a grandparent. One day, man, listen, I'm going to do something big in your life. One day you may get this promotion. You need to be ready for that. Noah, build a boat. What boat are you building? What life are you building? What character are you building? How are you growing? How are you going to be ready when the rain does come? How are you going to be standing strong when the challenges come in your life? And Because we will. But Noah built a boat. And you can imagine how many of his neighbors came over and go, you're crazy. How many people came over and, why don't you just do it the way the world does it? Everybody else is doing that, Noah. And he's like, oh, no, 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 no. God's got a bigger plan. God's got a bigger purpose. I'm holding on to him. I'm trusting in him. I'm growing on my knees. I'm growing deep in faith. I'm growing my marriage. I'm growing my family. I'm growing godly relationships. I'm being in community because I know that there'll be a challenge that'll come, and I'm going to need these people, and God's growing something in me. Are you growing in patience? Are you growing in the Lord? Are you active? In the waiting, look at this. Patience requires a bigger perspective. It requires a bigger perspective. If you keep going in James, it says, James says this, brothers and sisters, verse 10, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who persevered. We have heard of Job's perseverance. And we have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Job, when you think about this guy, Job, most people who hear about Job and you think about all the bad things they went through, right? And he did. I mean, let's be honest. This guy, Job, I mean, it was tough. And the guy was blameless. I mean, he was godly. I mean, he was righteous. And then Satan comes along and goes, well, the only reason he's righteous is because God, look at your blessing him. And God goes, well, you could test him. And all of a sudden, things in Job's life begin to fall apart, man. I mean, his livestock is stolen. One of the houses gets burned down. His kids are killed. I mean, it, it just all falls apart. He, I mean, he gets these boils on his body. His wife even comes and says, Job, why don't you just curse God and die? <laughs> Thanks, honey. You know, it's like, Really? I mean, I know it's a rough patch. I know it's really hard. I know it looks really bad. But really, that's your advice? I just curse God and die? And I love Job's faith. What does Job say? <laughs> the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Maybe you're in a rough patch. It's not the end of the story. It's not the end of Job's story. Job stayed faithful in that time. Job patiently waited for God's best. Job patiently waited for God's redemption. Job patiently waited for God to come through. And if you go and read the book of Job, you get to the end. And God 
blesses Job even more than before. Job stayed faithful, and God gave him this return that was unbelievable. I mean, whether it's kids or livestock or, or success, all those things. And in your life and in my life, the end of the story is not right now. The best is still to come. You hold on to God. You get a bigger perspective that God is at work, that God is sovereign, that God's in control. Listen, Sip, discipleship requires time. And so often we're like, man, I just want to be further along. I want to be, you know, this place or that place in my life. But it requires time for us to grow in Christ. God is working in our lives to shape us into the image of his son. Romans 8, 29, right? For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of Christ. And so in your life, are you looking more like Jesus? Now, what was Jesus like? He was never in a hurry, <laughs> I mean, Jesus, right? I mean, there's crowds everywhere. I mean, he accomplished more in three years than any of us ever will, right? I mean, but Jesus was not in a hurry. He didn't see people as a distraction. He didn't see people as a hindrance. He loved. He forgave. He offered grace. He offered mercy. What about you? What about me? What about in your life? What about in my life? Am I living like that? Am I trusting Patience comes as we grow in our relationship with Christ. Jesus said, if you remain in me, I'll remain in you, and you will bear much fruit. And so for us, it's not just going, I got to be patient, I got to be patient, I got to be patient. For us, it's like, hey, I want to look into God's word. Hey, I want to pray about this situation. I want to pray about this relationship because I know I've been testy. I, I know I've been angry. I know I've been grumbling in here. And God, I want to pray about that. God, I want to ask you to come in here. God, I want to ask you to be Lord over this situation. God, even at work, there's some things that are happening. And God, I get a little impatient there. I should be at a different place. They're skipping over me, God. You know, they don't see it. But, but God, instead of getting mad and angry, God, I'm going to pray about this. And God, I'm going to invite you into this. Because God, I trust you. I trust you. Are you growing? <laughs> are you maturing? You know, when you get to 1 Corinthians 13, it's called the love chapter. And it has all these great characteristics about love. And maybe you've had it read at a wedding or you've been there or was at your wedding. But, but it says this, love is patient. The very first word, right? It's the very first word that describes the word patient. A lot of times I'll say in 1 Corinthians 13, right, put your name there. You know, Jeff is patient. Am I? <laughs> Jeff is patient. Are you patient? Are you waiting? Because really that's what love is. Love is saying, God, I, I know that you've got a plan here. And God, I'm going to put this other person before me. You see, Lisa, my beautiful, amazing wife, she doesn't need to be married to me. She needs to be married to Jesus. I need to love her like Jesus loved her. I need to offer her grace and forgiveness. She's awesome. And yet there's times when, man, we have this disagreement over something, and I want to respond in my own selfish way instead of going, hold on, I value you. I love you. My kids, they don't need me as a dad. They don't need me. They need Jesus. <laughs> in those times when you get frustrated or angry and it's like, hold on, hold on. You know, why are you yelling at your sister? I don't know. That's what y'all do, right? <laughs> it's like, well, hold on. Wait a minute. No, 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 no. We're going to offer love. We're going to offer grace. We're going to offer encouragement. We're going to be a people who love. In our families, we're going to be patient with one another. Isn't it interesting? Think about this. Isn't it interesting how we're patient with ourselves, but not always patient with others? Isn't it interesting how we'll go, well, you know what? I'm just a work in progress, right? I'm growing, and it's my sinful nature, and I do this. And yet when it comes to others, all of a sudden we've got this standard like, no, you've got to be perfect. You've got to reach this level. And why did you make that mistake? And instead of redeeming and loving and restoring, we're like, oh, wait a minute, now I'm going to judge. <laughs> and wait, wait a minute, the Lord is the judge. I don't stand in that place. God does. Love is patient. Maybe today, maybe today, life is just busy, it's crazy. And for you, it's this time to come in and go, you know what, I need to build some margin in my life. I am overscheduled, I'm overcrowded, and a lot of times that's why I'm not patient. I'm frustrated because I'm trying to get somewhere in my life. I'm trying to get to this mythical place, this level, whether it's work or job or career or success or money or whatever. And I'm running after all these things. 
instead of stopping and saying, what's really important? God, family, church, community, and investing my time in those things. Can you build margin in your life? Can you build margin in your heart? Can we prioritize the things that really last and really matter? Because here's the thing about God. Our God is a patient God. Slow to anger and abounding in love. And aren't you thankful for that? Because let's be honest, we all mess up. Let's be honest, we all make mistakes. We all do the same sins over and over again. And aren't we thankful that God doesn't go, oh, well, I got the three, right? I got a one, two, I got there, you're out. Uh -uh. (laughs) Aren't we thankful that God goes, oh, there's grace. I'm gonna love you because I believe in you. And I believe your best days are still ahead. And I'm working in your heart and your life. I'm redeeming, I'm restoring. And there's gonna be some things that are coming along that you need to be ready for. And you need to grow in this area. And you need to be strong. And you need to be steadfast. You're going to be the leader, right, of your family one day. You're going to be the one at company. You're going to be the one at a church. You're going to be the one at a community group. You're going to be one in a ministry. And, and you've got to have that character. And you've got to have that integrity. And so I'm going to keep forgiving. I'm going to keep redeeming. I'm going to keep restoring. But I'm going to use you. Be patient. I'm not finished with you. I'm still at work. Think about that. God loves you with an everlasting love. God will never give up on you. So let us be people who love like that. Let us be people who are patient, who are kind. I love this verse here in 2 Peter. It says, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. And what's his promise? His promise is that his son is coming back one day. That is his promise. You know, there's more prophecies about Jesus' second coming than there was even his first On the first coming of the Messiah, over 300 prophecies in the Old Testament. There's more in the New Testament about Jesus' second coming. That Jesus is going to come back, and when he comes back, he's going to say, enough, enough pain, enough suffering, and we have eternal life with him. Heaven is going to be incredible. It's going to be awesome. And the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Oh, no, he is patient with you. Think about that. God is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish but everyone to come to repentance. God wants you to know him. God wants you to grow in him. God loves you and he loves you so much he sent his son, Jesus, for you. Maybe today is the day of salvation. You just realize, wait a minute. God has been drawing me to himself. All the friends and the family, the people in my life, God God wants to have a relationship with me. God loves me. God's not mad at me. God forgives me. God redeems me. God restores me. Today, Jesus, I commit my life to you. I want to follow you. I want to grow in my relationship with you. Maybe today, God's just saying, hey, are you patient with others? I'm patient with you. But are you patient in your marriage? Maybe today, you just need to Reach over to your spouse and grab a hand and just say, listen, I love you. I care about you. I want us to have a great marriage. I want us to thrive. Are you patient with your kids? It's interesting how we can get so frustrated with those that we love the most. Are you patient? Are you patient with your coworkers? Are you patient with your classmates at school? Are you patient in your dating life? Are you patient at where you are in your career? Are you patient going, God, you've got the best for me. God, let me trust you. See, patience is that calm endurance based on this certain knowledge that God's in control. I'm not in control. God's in control. So God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to love you. For however many days I have on this earth, God, I'm going to live it all for your name and for your glory. Because, God, you love me. I want to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes just for a moment. I don't know where you are today. I don't know where you are. Maybe a day is a day of salvation. You just go, Jesus, I need you. I've been so frustrated in my life. I've been angry, bitterness. God, I need you. Come into my heart. 
come into my heart. Forgive me. Redeem me. Restore me. God, I'm yours. Jesus, forgive my sins. Thank you for your patience, Father, in my life. Maybe a day you just go, God, I pray healing in my marriage. <laughs> I pray you would calm my heart. and I pray you would bless my spouse. Maybe there's some patience that you need with your kids. Maybe you have a child who's far from God right now. and You've been praying and praying and praying. Don't stop. Keep praying. God's at work. God's at work. Maybe you need patience in your dating life. You know who you're dating is not the right one, but you just want so bad for them to be it. Can you trust God? Maybe you need patience with growing a family. I don't know what it is. Or in a job or career or financial father. God, we need patience. And so today, Father, we ask that you would come into our hearts and our lives. That you would draw us to your heart. That we would hear your love for us. We would experience your grace. Thank you that you're a God who's patient with us. And now let us be patient with others. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, amen.